Hello everybody, Moon Illusion here, and today we're going to be doing um, the Ultimate Assassin Build 2.0, and we're going to be going through this quickly as I don't want another 36 minute video. Technically this is the Overpowered Build Part 3, as Ultimate Assassin Build was meant to be another Overpowered Build Part, uh, but I decided not to do that because the title would have been as long as the video was, so uh, let's get right into it. Uh, we're going to start with Wood Elf, we get plus 2 to Dexterity and Wisdom, and uh, what we're going to be doing is Dark Vision Keen Senses. This gives you proficiency in the perception skill and this allows you to get Dark Vision. If you don't know what Dark Vision is, uh, you can see in dark and dim light within 60 feet as if it were bright light and in darkness as if it was dim light. Um, sorry, you could see in dim light within 60 feet of you as if it was bright light. Um, this makes dungeon crawling way better and it also paired with the perception skill makes you the scout and uh, scouts out enemies before they have the opportunity to scout at you and you get more, uh, potentially more surprise rounds out of this, having both of those skills right off the bat. You also get Fate Ancestry, uh, which you have advantage on saving throws against being charms, uh, charm and magic can't put you to sleep. This is really good because uh, if an enemy tries to charm you and uh, to make you go against your teammates, you're not the one that's, uh, you could potentially save these charm effects easier and not kill all your teammates as I have actually done in some of my games. Um, so being an elf helps prevent that. You also get trance. Trance basically means that you only have to meditate for four hours and that could count as an entire long rest, which is really good because I've actually seen elves at my table use this ability and then scout out a whole dungeon by uh, you know sneaking through it and then coming back in the morning while everyone else is waking up and then reporting what they see. This makes you essentially a better scout as you don't need as much sleep as everyone else. And then Mask of the Wild. You can attempt to hide even if you are only lightly obscured by foliage, heavy rain, falling snow, mist, and other natural phenomena. Basically you can hide uh, whenever you're outside. Um, yeah, alright. so. Before we go on to the classes, I want to go into the ability score and the description. So, what we're actually going to be doing instead of what I have here, is we're going to be putting a 10 in that. And the reason we're doing this is pretty odd right now, but we're going to go with 17 dexterity. We usually want to go with an even number, uh, but you'll see why in a little bit. It'll be like this for a while, but trust me, it's for a reason. We're going to dump. Strength and Intelligence, we don't want a negative score in our constitution, but I don't think a positive score is very um, effective as we're going to be out of the fray a lot, or at least try to be out of the fray a lot. This will incentivize that we won't have as much HP, so we want to stay out of the fight. Uh, we also, Dexterity 17, Wisdom 16, and then Charisma 14, because I feel like being an assassin you're going to have to lie or persuade your way into buildings that you are not allowed to be in um, so I feel like charisma very very much helps with that and we're gonna see um, that actually our classes really help with that all right for our first class we are actually not going to be going rogue I found it's actually more effective and much more easier on the whole class if we go with a fighter at first now the reason why is because we're going to be getting uh, all martial weapons as a proficiency right off the bat and a fighting style now having all martial weapons means that you get longbows at the first level which is a rogue you really can't even though we're only taking three levels of rogue i feel like it's more important to have a longbow proficiency at first rather than getting the rogue ability at first so our simple weapons and martial weapons uh we also get strength and constitution constitution is actually an okay thing because this um, rounds us up a bit because our con isn't that high but we could save from poison much more often and we're gonna have a high dexterity so we don't technically need a dexterity saving throw um, although it is important I just feel like this actually rounds us up uh, as a whole because we're gonna have a wisdom a high wisdom a high dex and now we're gonna have proficiency in constitution meaning we have basically all the really important saves covered the more uh, common ones we're gonna be taking acrobatics and insight for our proficiencies and for our fighting style we're obviously gonna be choosing archery 
which gives it a plus two bonus to attack uh, attack rolls with ranged weapons. It also gets second wind, which uh, allows you to regain hit points as a bonus action equal to 1d10 plus your fighter level. Um, so this is pretty good, especially since we have a such low HP. Before I keep moving on to describe our other skills at first level, I want to go with the Urban Bounty Hunter um, to get Stealth and Deception for our skill proficiencies, and then for our tool proficiencies, Thieves Tools and a playing card set, because why not a playing card set? Uh, but Thieves Tools at first level, so we're basically already uh, a rogue at this level. Alright, moving on to level 2, we're going to be taking Action Surge. We're not really going to be taking it, we're going to receive it. Uh, which allows you to uh, get one extra action uh, for uh, once per short or long rest and we're not going to be getting up to 17th level so we're not going to experience two action searches per short and long rest but we get an additional action this will make us um, potentially twice as effective especially at these first two levels uh, as we're going to be attacking one more time if we use this and uh, with our extra attacks and such, this will be essential for those surprise rounds, as you're going to see coming up. At the third level, we're going to be taking the Samurai Archetype. What this gives us is not only a bonus proficiency, which I recommend going with the Samurai skill and getting Persuasion. So, like I said, we can go into places and uh, that'll help with our disguise. And we're going to get actually an ability to help with our persuasion later on. But um, we also get Fighting Spirit as a bonus action. Uh, you get this three times a day, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you can use this feature three times and you uh, get all expended uses back when you finish a long rest. And as a bonus action on your turn, you can give yourself advantage on weapon attack rolls until the end of your current turn. And when you do so, you gain five temporary hit points. Uh, the number of temporary hit points increases when you gain certain levels in this class. I'm pretty sure we're only going to be reaching uh, to 10 total extra hit points, but still, 10 extra total hit points as a bonus action. It's pretty good. It doesn't stack, unfortunately. Normally, uh, these things do not stack, but you have 22 hit points at level 3. You're basically as fragile as a wizard, so having 5 more hit points is really good at these early levels. Moving on to level 4, we're going to be taking... The ability score improvement, Sharpshooter. Now, Sharpshooter is a really good uh, feature. It's one of my favorite features for D&D 5e. And uh, basically, it just makes shooting at long range very viable. So, um, you don't get disadvantage when you're shooting at long range. Your range weapon attacks ignore half cover and three quarter cover. And you can take a minus five penalty to the attack roll. Uh, and then you get plus ten to the attack's damage if you still hit. So, uh, all in all, this is really good. This adds to the assassin type uh, feeling to the class because this will definitely bump up your damage by a lot. Now, at fifth level, we get extra attack if this thing will load, which uh, will give us basically double the effectiveness in combat. Um, it's there's not too much to say for it, but this is the best ability for this class. The more attacks you make, uh, the better, and we'll see why later. Alrighty. And now going to level 6, another ASI. And now we're going to be choosing the Elven Accuracy Feat. Elven Accuracy Feat allows you to um, choose Dexterity, Intelligence, Wisdom, or Charisma. Increase uh, one of those uh, by one, and then... Whenever you have advantage on an attack roll using Dexterity, Intelligence, Wisdom, or Charisma, so our longbow, we are going to be able to reroll one of those dice once. Uh, so this is really good. It doesn't give you triple advantage, quote unquote, but it does allow you to, even if you still roll two dice that suck, reroll one of those dice to potentially get a really good number. Um, you can also, if you roll HP or if you use some sort of other uh, thing that you don't really need to get ability score improvements, you can always go with um, uh, getting the lucky feat as well to add to this a little bit uh, per day. 
I don't know. I, that's just an idea I had uh, just now. All right. So, sixth level, only 40 hit points. We're going to add another class, but surprise, surprise again, it's not going to be Rogue. It's going to be Ranger. I feel like these earlier levels, having uh, the Ranger and the Fighter is a little bit better than having a, the Rogue. Now we get the proficiencies we can add. I think I want to go with um, survival. Just for the outdoors nature of wood elves and uh, and your uh, being able to hide there. All right. And then we got our favorite enemy. You can choose whatever you want. But I feel like a really, really good one is just going with humanoids and humans. As you are going to be mainly assassinating human enemies. Um, I don't know though obviously I also like going with orcs a little bit because I feel like orcs are pretty common also goblinoids but you're not gonna have much trouble against goblinoids as you will with orcs probably and then you can choose whatever lang language you want and then natural explorer uh, I like going with Arctic for some reason you go with whatever you want it's up to your character um, forest would also work for this character as well uh, and then we're gonna be going up to third level of this class, but at second level, we get a fighting style which we can't actually take. You cannot choose this option more than once. So this is pretty uh, useless um, thing that we get, but we do get spell casting, and we're only going to be able to get first level spells with a ranger, but they're still good nonetheless. All right, so we're going to be taking Hunter's Mark, which is a concentration spell, but it's a bonus action. So at the start of your combat you can always just choose to do this right away bonus action the biggest baddest target or one of the ones that is giving the most trouble and you can deal an extra 1d6 damage to the target whenever you hit with a weapon attack and you have advantage on any wisdom perception or wisdom survival check to find that creature if the target drops to zero hit points before the spell ends you can use a bonus action on a subsequent turn to mark a new creature so this is one of the reasons why um, this will work with this build at later levels because an extra 1d6 damage doesn't sound like a lot, but to every attack roll, it's going to add up very fast. Uh, you can go with any other um, spell you want to. I'm going to be choosing probably Cure Wounds, but I also recommend Detect Magic as just a bonus thing. But if you're desperate for healing, have no... Uh, healing spells or healing uh, potions you can go with this to get 1d8 plus your spell casting ability and you also have second wind too so both was add all right and then we go with level three now level three we're gonna be get, getting our subclass and as you're gonna see soon it is going to be it's gonna add a lot to this class all right so this is the new and improved version of the Ultimate Assassin. Uh, we get Gloomstalker Magic, which at this level we're going to get Disguise Self, which is honestly pretty good for this build, uh, because we're going to be able to disguise ourselves as maybe like a town guard to get into somewhere that's uh, you know, less um, or more heavily guarded. And then we're also going to be getting Dread Ambusher, Umbral Sight, and prim uh, sorry, Primeval Awareness. At third level, you master the art of ambush. You can give yourself a bonus to your initiative rolls equal to your wisdom modifier. At the start of your first turn of each combat, your walking speed increases by 10 feet, which lasts until the end of that turn. If you take the attack action on that turn, you can make one additional weapon attack as part of that action. If the attack hits, the target takes an, an extra 1d8 damage to the weapon type. So. It is an additional attack, so one additional of an attack as part of that action, meaning that it benefits from action surge, and it does. It says at the start of your first turn of combat, but you should talk to your DM and see if that also applies to any surprise round, because technically that is the first round of combat or first turn. Um, so yeah, talk to your DM, see if he's okay with that, because this will make those surprise rounds really worth it but this still benefits you as a whole as you're going to be getting a lot of benefits from just the first round of combat to end it as fast as possible. Then Umbral Sight, you gain dark vision out of a range of 60 feet. If you already have dark vision 
from the, your race, its range increases by 30 feet. This is really good for our build because an extra 30 feet of dark vision is always very uh, nice. All right. And then you're also adept at evading creatures that rely on dark vision. While in darkness, you are invisible to any creature that relies on dark vision to see you in that darkness. So, again, really good stuff. Invisibility at <laughs> third level, even against people with dark vision, that's always really good. Um, and then we're going to be getting the uh, primeval awareness. Beginning at third level, you can use your action to expend one ranger spell slot to focus your awareness on the region around you. For one minute per level of the spell you expend, you can sense whether the following types of creatures are present within one mile of you, or within up to six miles if you are fa uh, in your favored terrain. Aberrations, Celestials, Dragons, Elementals, Fey, Fiends, and Undead. This will just help you add to your um, tracking and uh, scouting and sneaking up on other people. So I honestly like this ability a lot. All right, now we're done with the Gloomstalker Ranger. We're gonna move on and we're going to take the rogue finally, uh, even though it is, um, even though it's really late into the game. So we're gonna be choosing our, pretty much our last proficiency bonus. I wanna go with sleight of hand as it's more of a roguish type uh, ability. <laughs> And then you also get expertise, which I'm gonna go into stealth and probably honestly uh, perception. And then sneak attack and thieves can't. If you don't know what these two things are, um, it's just an extra bonus that you get if you have advantage. And if there is an enemy of the creature within five feet of it, you don't get it if you have disadvantage on the roll. Um, which we're going to be having advantage quite a lot. So this uh, ability is really good for this class. And Thieves Can't is a special language that uh, roguey boys know. So we're going to do the second level of rogue. And you get uh, the cunning action, which is basically uh, you could take the dash, disengage, or hide action as a bonus action on your turns. So if you're not utilizing the fighting spirit on your bonus action, you're going to be taking dash, disengage, or hide action quite a lot, especially to get out of uh, enemy reach. So I like this ability a lot. It's really good, uh, especially paired with low constitution as you can get out of the fray a lot. A roguish archetype, you're taking the assassin, obviously. It's basically going to be the build is like our assassin build from now on. Now starting at third level, you are, you are at your deadliest when you are get the drop on your enemies. You have advantage on attack rules against any creature that hasn't taken a turn of combat yet. In addition, any hit you score against a creature that is surprised is a critical hit. So, all those attacks that you're doing, especially within the first round, you have a lot of initiative, so this is really good for you. Um, so, in the first, like, before anyone goes, or uh, in the surprise rounds, all those attacks that you're making, so the two attacks possibly a third attack from Gloomstalker with action surge, so six attacks at this level, all with maybe Sharpshooter, and all that hit is a critical hit, all with advantage, so that means that you get the Elven Accuracy ability. So at 12th level, you are going to be able to do a lot with this class already. Um, so this is the kind of class, multi-classing kind of sucks a lot of the time. But not for this class necessarily. I'm playing this right now. I'm six levels of fighter samurai. And I've got to say I still do a lot of damage. Even, you know, without the Gloomstalker Ranger or the Assassin Rogue. And I'm looking forward to this. Whereas usually when you're multi-classing to make a really niche build or a really convoluted build. It's very disheartening to stick through because you're not getting the features that you want. Or you're not doing as much as you know you can um, but this is uh, this is still good throughout you're gonna drop off a little bit when you go into gloomstalker rogue until you actually get the gloomstalker as the first two levels are kind of um, the same as the fighter but kind of less abilities because you do get more ability score improvements and more features through samurai but for the rest of the level we're gonna go with fighter samurai now I'm not gonna explain the fighter samurai too much I'm just gonna explain something that we don't get which is kind of unfortunate. Um, 
which is going to be the rapid strike ability now uh, we can't get it as it's a level 15 ability so one level off um, but it doesn't matter too much as it only gives us one more attack and at this point we're gonna have um, almost four attacks on every uh, beginning of the round so it's gonna be really good especially since we're gonna have advantage on the first round of combat and we're gonna have sharpshooter you know all this stuff is going to come together so extra attack at 11th level we're also gonna get uh, tireless spirit so when you roll initiative you and you have no fighting spirit left you can get one more use so that means in the second or third round of combat you can give yourself advantage on an attack or on all your attacks elegant courier uh, or sorry court courtier uh, you uh, excel in social situations whenever you make a charisma persuasion check you gain a bonus to the check equal to your wisdom modifier meaning that you can get a lot more persuasion than maybe some classes especially if you have more charisma than I, I have in this video for the rest of the ability score improvements I like to go with um, oops dexterity and uh, and wisdom to try to cap those off as fast as possible and like I said in the last video you can go with elven magic to get past without a trace but you can also go with um, if you have no more need for uh, ability score improvements to get your wisdom and dex up all the way you can go with uh, the alert feat which gives you plus five to your initiative to make you even faster in combat so you can go before more people so all in all this actually adds quite a lot to this build as you're gonna get more attacks for the gloomstalker rogue and you get the uh, hunter's mark spell which gives you an extra 1d6 damage um, and then all the rest of this is basically the same you're not going to really lose out on damage through all of this you're gonna have a crazy hit modifier with your bow with the plus two that you get from the archery fighting style uh, we can even go to the um, character page and look at what you could do specifically so let this thing load sorry my internet is very bad because I live in the country so I might speed this up if it takes too long all right, so that took quite a long time. So let's talk about um, this. Yeah. <laughs> so we have a plus five in dex and a plus five in wisdom. As you can see our saving throws, we have a plus six to con saves, a plus five to dex saves, and a plus 11 to wisdom saves. I think this really complements us. We have a decent score in both of these, so we can get out of a lot of those situations very easily um, with uh, con saves and dex saves. And then uh, we have really good skills uh, proficiencies. We have a plus 17 to stealth, plus 17 to perception, and a plus 13 in persuasion, which is pretty good, especially since we don't are not we do not have expertise and we only have a plus two in charisma. Um, for our longbow, we are hitting with a plus 13, so if we minus five to that, it's still a plus eight. Uh, so you still are going to hit more often than not. You have a range of 600 with that so you can surprise people from 600 feet away with your uh, bow and you have a 1d8 with sharpshooter a plus 15 for each attack now if we are going with the um, with the crits in the surprise round with the action surge and if you get permission with your DM that you can get the gloom stalker uh, extra attack meaning you get four attacks per action uh, and you action surge so that means you do um, eight attacks with your longbow all at 2d8 damage plus 15 each um, meaning you'll do, you'll do this I don't know because I don't have the calculation right here but this number of average damage with hunter's mark um, and your sneak attack all added together uh, all critical hit all critically hits and all at technically tripled advantage and this is without magic items either so yeah it adds quite a bit to this class and i just thought you guys might want to know the only reason that i thought of um because the character i'm playing and that's this is why i started thinking about this build and that's why i made this build video the character i'm playing hates magic that's why i just made the build uh without the uh gloom stalking ranger because he hates magic so he obviously wouldn't use it but I should be thinking when I'm making these videos about the videos first, not my characters, my build for those characters. And I should have mentioned that in my video. 
So yes, Gloomstalking Ranger definitely adds a lot to this class, and I thought I'd make a video on it just so you guys would know. Alright, hope you guys like this video, and I'm super close to 100 subscribers, so if you can subscribe, I'm going to make a 100k, or not 100k, Jesus Christ, a 100 subscriber special. I hope you guys will uh, enjoy that. Please tell your friends if you uh, think that that would be a cool thing to do. I don't know. <laughs> so see you guys in the next one.